Hi, my name is Josh Evilsizer, and today we're going over AI chatbot prompting fundamentals. Are you watching the right video? Well, if your AI chatbot results aren't what you'd like them to be, or you're just starting out with AI, and you want to know the basics of an effective prompt, then yes. Questions answered in this video. What is the most important component of an effective prompt and why is it context? What is context? Why is context important? We'll go over some examples and we'll end with the most important question, why should you care? So let's jump right in. We're gonna use Claude today and this is version 3.0, recently updated version Sonnet. But let's talk about context. What is it? So let's say you're talking with your friend and out of the blue, you just say, so what'd you think about the proposal? Your friend's gonna be very confused without any context of this question that you're posing to them. The same is absolutely true for LLMs, chatbots, AI models, however you like to refer to them. Context is key. And there are three minimum components or ingredients for providing context. And I use a very simple acronym to remember these three, these three, <laughs> three key components, PAO. And as a army person, it's easy for me to remember because that reminds me of public affairs officer. In any event, PAO, persona, audience, and output. These are the three components that we're gonna talk about today. And we're gonna start with persona. Persona is critical to informing the AI model's approach. You are going to tell it to assume a persona. Are you a scientist giving a lecture? Are you a motivational speaker pumping up a crowd? Or are you a writer penning a short story? Persona obviously matters. Persona provides the LLM crucial context for framing its communication style and point of view. So persona, that's the P in PAO. The next part of context that we're gonna talk about is audience. Audience informs the language, level of detail, and examples that the LLM should provide. So are you a, again, audience, are you talking to a group of experts in the field? Are you talking to entrepreneurs or fifth grade kids? It all matters. Explaining complex scientific concepts to physis physicists requires much different framing than breaking breaking the same concepts down for a bunch of elementary school students. Audience, audience matters. Okay, so P-A-O, output. Clearly specifying your desired end product is obviously key. Are you looking for a report, an article, a poem, or a list of steps? Simply put, if you tell it what you want, you're more likely to get it. So persona, audience, and output. What does that look like? A quick, hasty example, and then we'll go over a more detailed one. So persona, you are Steve Jobs. We are telling the model to become a different person so that it can then begin thinking like that person and providing content that would come from that person, all right? Audience, so who are you talking to? What is this thing you're preparing and where is it going? Where is it going is the question we're answering here, right? So journalists and tech enthusiasts at the Macworld conference in 2007. And of course you can see where we're going here. Output, provide a keynote address script, right? So it's gonna be the script for unveiling the first iPhone. And so there is just a quick example of persona, audience, and output, and a very short example. We're gonna go over a longer one in a moment. All right. So. First, let's talk about, or let me answer the question, why context is important, or let me provide some more analogy or example. So imagine you're a movie director and you've been asked to create a movie, but you've not been provided a script, actors, or a set. Kind of hard, right? It's very similar to asking an LLM to produce content, content, content without context. Another analogy. So this comes from Ethan Mollick. He's a Wharton professor, has a lot of good stuff out there. You should check him out, linked in the description below. But so he, he provided this great example. So imagine the AI's knowledge as this large knowledge 
cloud. And this AI model has the opportunity to answer you in any voice that you ask it to. Shakespearean sonnets, a mortgage broker, math formulas. But it's not. It's going to answer you in its default voice, which is in the center of this cloud. It's the default voice for the default user. It's got to dumbify or simplify its answers for the largest crowd. So it, when you provide context, you are now pushing the AI to a more relevant or interesting corner or section of this knowledge cloud. Again, this is an analogy, right? It's not a scientific scientifically correct example, but you're pushing it to a more relevant or interesting corner of its knowledge and giving you, of course, a much better answer. Ask better questions, get better answers. And let me give you an example of how we can do this, how we can go from bad to good just by thinking about PAO, persona, audience, and output. So here we go. Back to Claude, and I'm going to start with Perhaps what we all started with when we started using AI, or you may still be using, and that's okay. Uh, so this is a bad example of asking for a meal plan. Uh, again, bad. Provide a meal plan I can use on Sunday for my family. Of course, we're, gonna, we're using the example of meal planning here, and this, of course, is not the right starting point. Uh, well, sure it is. It's the right starting point to begin with, but let's expand upon this. Okay, so we know we want a meal plan. We know we're going to use it on Sunday. It's for our family. Well, how can we get? How can we do this better? Um, and of course, starting with P, persona. Providing a persona is going to help us do that. And here we go. So persona. Think about who you are. And in this example, this is not exactly me, but I'm you know pretending to be a parent with two kids here. And I'm telling the model, this is who you are. So the model, we are applying our persona to it or the persona that we want it to assume. So you are a busy parent with a with moderate cooking skills. This is the this is the first thing we come up with, right? And I've bulletized by number the rest of the things that as we're trying to answer this question, persona, what is our persona, we're coming up with additional ideas. Again, these this PAO is a structure that helps elicit additional details that we can then provide to it to get better answers. So persona, you're a busy parent with moderate cooking skills. Hmm, well, what does moderate mean? Okay, yeah, so, um, you know, not a beginner, but also not an expert. Cool, there's no, oh wait, what else? So you love to please your family with meals that are both healthy and delicious. Man, we're just rocking and rolling here. Okay, well, healthy and delicious, let's talk some more about that. Avoiding anything blatantly unhealthy like deep fried foods. Now, if you've watched my other video description or link in the description below, we talked about starting simple and being specific. And part of that that we mentioned or that I mentioned in the video is when you tell a model not to do something, you should provide an example of what to do. So it's it's less helpful to provide a negative. It's more helpful if you provide it, if you have to provide the negative to provide the uh, what to do if you must do this negative thing, or if you don't do this negative thing, do this other thing. And in this case, so if you're avoiding deep fried foods, instead opt for steamed, baked, or similar healthier alternatives. So there we go. There's five bullet points that we kind of just thought of on the fly as we, as we remembered to use persona and then add details to that persona. All right, persona. Audience, so let's cover audience. So we throw up the A, and then we start adding the detail. Okay, so this meal is for your family of four. Okay, well, what, is that, what does that consist of? Oh, consisting of two adults and two young teenagers. Okay, yeah, one's a boy, one's a girl. Oh, yeah, and our wife, she doesn't eat meat, and our son adheres to a keto diet. Cool. Oh, yeah, and we, we also we try to spend less than 50 bucks. So there we go. We went from zero to five. Five bullet points providing us five additional pieces of detail, pushing pushing the AI model to the right portion of that knowledge cloud to give us helpful information. All right, so the last piece we covered, persona, audience, and then we want to provide output to help provide context. So 
output. Your role is to. These words are key. We are keying the model into this is what you must do. So your role is to. Very helpful key phrase to use before you start to tell it what the output is. And I put in here, think step by step. So this is a little outside of the scope of this discussion, but it's worth including. Anytime you're asking a model to take sequential steps, you want to let it know, hey, think step by step. And this is what we've done here. I'm then going to use additional keywords to let it know first, next, and last. And you'll see those as I go through the rest of this example. So think step by step. The first, or sorry, to first develop a meal plan that includes a main dish, two sides, and a dessert. Again, we're providing much more level of a much higher level of detail than we did in the beginning when we just said give us a meal plan. So main dish, two sides, and a dessert. Next, again, we're giving it the next step. And you could bulletize this too if you wanted to when you're giving it to the model. They understand that. Uh, so next, provide the recipe for each item. All right, so a meal plan, a recipe. And then finally, provide a shopping list for all of the required ingredients. This will work because we are breaking it down chapter and verse for this model. Your role is to think step by step, first, next, then last. All right. Before we end, I'm going to end with a completely outside of the scope of this conversation bonus question that's worth adding to any prompt. Important, if you have questions, ask them before getting started. This will prompt your model to ask questions of you to provide additional context or clarification. So let's bring this thing all together now, as they say. Persona. So you are a busy parent. Audience, this meal is for your family. Your role is to develop a meal plan, output, persona, audience, output, the three components of providing context. And so we had five bullet points for each of these three components. Remember, our first sentence was just to give us a meal plan, one sentence, Two or three pieces of detail, really one. In any event, five bullets for each of these three components, 15 levels of detail comprised in this giant prompt. Now, sometimes you see these prompts on the web, and how did this person come up with it? Just following structure, persona, audience, output. Put those three bullets down, add some detail. The next thing you know, you're going to have a very, very good question. And you, if you ask good questions, you get good answers. And you can see here, because I asked the model to ask me if it had additional questions, it has done so. Now, I could sit here and answer those questions, but that would bore you to death. I'm going to let you take this example or your own, provide persona, audience, and output, and develop your own prompt to start asking better questions to get better answers. But before we leave, we're going to answer the question, why should you care? Or why should you improve your prompting skills? AI is the future, and the future is now. And no, AI will not replace humans, but humans that use AI will replace humans that don't. And the only way to get good at using AI is by using AI. All right, thank you for watching. If I've inspired you, please let me know. And please check out the next video in this series. It'll be linked down below. We're covering organizing your prompts. Please don't forget, if you like this video, please do check out the link goodness below. Like, subscribe, share this with somebody else that might like it or enjoy it. If you leave questions, I will leave answers. Now go and be productive.